Okay, we're online. How are Hello. you? I'm great. How are you? I am great. Uh, I am great. Guess what? It's like the weekend again. <laughs> oh my gosh, another holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very confusing. I'm actually happy that we're starting a new week Sunday and we can just start again. And we know it's actually Sunday, where right? I cannot remember what day of the week it is. I, I know. I'm just saying today's Wednesday, tomorrow's the weekend again, like nearly the weekend again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's 8.30 and for the people who are on time, I like to start on time. So let's just start. So good evening, everybody. My name is Nirit Hoffman. I'm an attorney and my main focus is estate planning and elder law, which means preparing wills, enduring to have attorney trusts, and advising on estate and tax issues for people who have dual citizenships, U.S. and um, Israeli citizenships. And from my exposure with this age group, I realized that there's so many other important issues that should be addressed to concern the elderly. And so I decided to host these talk sessions with other professionals that work with or help or advise um, or talk about issues to do with the elders. And today we're going to be talking to Adina Cooper, who is the founder of Living That Works. And we will be discussing how to gain peace of mind by creating your life and legacy. So first of all, thank you so much, Adina, for joining me at this late hour. I really appreciate it. And uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, thank you, Mimri. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, it's been really a pleasure getting to know you over the past few months. Um, I thank you. I am a, first of all, a grandmother of four, soon to be a grandmother of six, God willing. So I just want to give you some background about me. I uh, came to Israel 40 years ago and started uh, working in commercial real estate, did a lot of real estate development and advisory work. And you probably recognize a lot of the buildings that I built or was involved in over the years on Route 4, probably see the SAP building or on Route 2, the Medtronics building, or even the Channel 12 News building I was involved in. So uh, those are the kind of things I did. and. Started working on the road, going between Singapore and um, the and Europe uh, for many several years, and I was traveling around an awful lot. Moved home homes many times, and finally ended up in Netanya, where I am now. This basically led me to setting up Living That Works and working with private people working on organizing, curating their lives, which we'll talk about, and doing renovations, design, and um, making things work for you. That's why my company is called Living That Works. Um, tonight, I think you'll get a broad view of what, what I do, the kinds of issues that we address, and uh, I hope it will be enjoyable. I'm sure it will be enjoyable, guys, because I had a little sneak peek, so you should stay stay tuned with us. So let's start. So wait, what's basically the connection between curating your life and legacy and peace of mind? Give us a little bit of a background here. Well, I actually, it all hit me at once when I moved to Netanya, because I, I'm sure a lot of you will identify with situation where you've been moving from home to home and you have certain boxes that you never really unpack. And I'm very organized when I move and I do this for a lot of people. I move, I know exactly where your things are going to go, which, which closet, which shelf, and everything has its place. And I moved into Netanya and out sitting on my mere pesset, my patio, there is this box and it's just looking at me and it's saying mom's China. And I'm looking at this box and I'm saying, I have no idea where to put this. This is a box that I am never going to unpack. It doesn't fit in my work in my dishwasher. I'm never going to use it. And I lost my mother when I was nine years old. And so this is one of the few things I have from my mother. 
Luckily, I have a very wise sister and I asked her, what do I do with this box of China? And she said, listen, I know it's really, this is China, it's not mom. And I think you should talk to Racheli, my daughter and see what she wants to do with it. If she wants it, then keep it. If she doesn't want it, then it's just China. So I called my daughter and she said, oh, I remember the pattern. Yes, it was so lovely. Yes, I do want it. I don't have a big enough apartment for it yet. But when I do, I definitely want it. So I had peace of mind. I was relieved. I was really relieved that I knew what I was doing with this. And granted, I didn't let go of it. But I did let go of it because it's going to my daughter. And um, I realized that a lot of people face these same issues all the time when they're downsizing, when they're changing their lives. Um, a lot of immigrants that I work with, uh, people that are older, moving from big homes to small homes, people moving to senior housing. And people want things to work and they need, they look at curating their legacy, how things are going to work for them in their lives now. So. That's, that's how I got to this whole thing. So what do you mean by curating? Give us an example. So um, curating, first of all, the what does curating mean? If you look it up in the dictionary, is something that's chosen very thoughtfully. Okay, it's organized and presented in a very intentional way. So one of the things we'll talk tonight about is intentionality. Okay, it's not just something to look at. It could be how we live our lives. Uh, I, I think about curating, a friend of mine shared with me that their um, mother-in-law passed away and they had came across this huge box of photos. And he just wanted to throw out the entire box. And his wife says, what do you mean? There could be a photo of my mother, of my grandfather, of my uncle. How could you possibly do this? And he's saying, this is a box of stuff I can't even make sense of it. So what I mean about curating is being very intentional about what you have, what you share, what you put together. It doesn't necessarily mean photographs. It could be any kind of things or ideas or things that you have, but it's being very intentional about what you leave so that it's not just a box of stuff. It's actually interesting what you said about the album, the box of stuff, because actually probably that box of pictures, I'm very into pictures, um, you could probably make into a very nice album. She doesn't have to have all the pictures there, but something sort of to remind her of the family that, that's no longer there. Exactly. And I do work with people that do that exact service. I have clients who have um, tens of albums and boxes of pictures and we work with them to organize it, put it together, scan them, they even make albums, put things online, share it with the family, mark who the people are. So I have a few people that work with me that do just that. And it's really cool. That's really nice. But I'm still a little bit confused. Isn't legacy more like a will, something for people that they do for when other people are gone, no longer with well, us? You are right. That's the traditional definition of legacy. And what we're going to do is expand that because legacy is also how we live now so that we are remembered and so that our lives have meaning. They, they have meaning for us and for those around us. I always take the example of uh, one of my clients who shared with me, oh, she goes to her grandchildren and she has so much pain and she doesn't want them to remember her her as the grandmother who couldn't do stuff because she was in pain and so she really works and makes sure in advance and while she's there that the way she's being is not about being in pain and she said I want that to be my legacy not that they think of this grandmother and this my friend is over 80 who's always in pain and can't do things so that is very intentional um, it's not a thing. It's something the way that she wants her life to be now with her grandchildren. Ah, so, so it's basically looking at things um, that you have that you might not necessarily want to have all of it, but you can take sort of pieces of stuff that you have 
and put it together into something that you want to share, want to keep. And if you want to get rid of the other stuff, then get rid of the other stuff, but sort of in an intentional way, if I'm understanding you correctly. I, I think the easiest way to drill down, if I would share a quote from, from one of the most well-known organizers in the US, um, his name is Andrew Mellon. And he said, being organized isn't about getting rid of everything you own or trying to become a different person. It's about living the way you want to live, but better. Okay, and that better is the peace of mind. It's not, you know, I don't work with clients and say, throw things away. I don't tell you what to throw away. We work together to create what you want for yourself, whether it's moving from a big house to a small home and, you know, finding the way that your things can work in your home or dealing with whatever you have so that. Your kids won't have to deal with it. I say to people, what would it look like if someone had to deal with your life tomorrow or today? You know, I, it's, it's all the things that we think about in this context are about not only making our lives easier today, but what would happen tomorrow if God forbid we had to deal with some, someone else had to deal with it. Right, no, smart. So how do, how do you start getting organized and creating your legacy? Um, I, think, I think that we can look at it from a point of view of three, three aspects. First of all, what is legally um, important, okay? What's in, like things like wills, um, the powers of attorney, all the kinds of things that you deal with, Mirit. Those are really, really important that people have in order. I'll give you an example. I have a client who I'm working with who will ask me to fix up her uh, one of her apartments, and reorganize it and set it up for rent. And we're walking around this beautiful apartment, sea view, gorgeous little location. And she goes, I would really like you to fix it up for me. And I said, well, why don't we? Why can't you live here? She said, no, my, my husband died two months ago and um, my children won't let me sell the house. And I'm looking at her and she was in a situation where she didn't have things in order. Her husband had not set up a will. She had no control of what happened. They had not agreed on anything. And so she couldn't live where she wants to live. So this like 75 year old lady is walking up stairs and maintaining a three-story house because she has no, um, she hasn't arranged things the way that, in any way that works for her. Um, so that's one thing that's really important. The other thing is what's important to you. So you have to sit down and think, what are those things that are important to me? Is it, you know, my family, uh, my clothing, having a house that's beautiful, whatever those things are. Um, I have a, a client who, who shared with me that she put in her will to continue um, a family event that they have every year. And she has even set aside money for it. And they, every year they go out for a really special dinner and they, you know, gourmet meal. And she wants all her kids to continue doing that um, long after she's gone and it's financed. In other words, she put aside money for it. And that's part of her legacy. She wants her kids to remember her as a person that they had fun with fun and food and good time. And so that was important. Um, everyone adds something that's important to them and it's worth thinking about. Absolutely. So, you know, it reminds me, I have this uh, client about things that are worth legacy. She has, um, she doesn't have a lot of jewelry. She had this one piece of very beautiful jewelry, big diamond ring, but she doesn't wear because it's so big and flashy and whatever, but she has it in a safe. And every so often when there's a special simcha, she puts it on. And she was saying, um, she was saying, I have four daughters. Who am I actually going to will it to? How's work? What am I going to do with this? And her idea, which I thought was a very nice legacy, was that she decided that 
each daughter would wear it for the wedding of the children that she has in her family. So for her grandchildren, for this woman's grandchildren. And that worked for her because she felt like she doesn't want to give it to just one person. She definitely doesn't want to sell this diamond ring because it was something in her family for very many generations. But this is something that she said to me, you know, even when I'm gone, my children, my grandchildren, hopefully even my great grandchildren might be able to, you know, remember me by this little big diamond ring because it came from Safta or Safta Rabba or whatever it is. So that, I guess that's some sort of legacy. And I thought that was actually a very nice idea. It took her a while to figure it out, but it was a very nice idea. It is. And it, and it's, and it's also taking into consideration the, the, the last thing that basically I wanted to, to point out, which is who will receive it and how will it be received, your legacy? In other words, it's also now how you're living. I know people that go visit their parents and they, you know, they look at and they want to help them. They want their house to be safe. They want to feel comfortable. You go to all kinds of environments that you say, oh, I don't want to go to dad because I'm just going to wind up having to clean up his stuff or things like that. So I, those are things that are now, but it's also how it is received in the future. Who gets it? For instance, I have a client who's a very well-known athlete and um, she has, she was an Olympic athlete. She wanted to save some things and for her family and she had tons of medals and trophies and memorabilia from her years and years of competing. And she you know, needed to create a space in her house. I mean, basically she, in our age, sometimes we have changes. She was merging her household with another person. And so they needed, a, they needed room. And we went through her things and decided to set aside a little corner in the in one of the rooms in the house that her actually her grandchildren stay in when they visit that has some photographs and some of her awards and some things. And a lot of the things we also sent to Wingate because there's also an interest in curating her history as a female athlete. Some things are to the National Archives and some things we did throw away, okay? You know, her junior high school uh, trophy we might've thrown out. So, it was done very intentionally for who would receive it, what would be of national interest, what is important to my grandchildren, what is important to maybe women athletes, what is important to the athletic community. And we did it. Um, and- That's such a beautiful idea. It's so yeah. lovely. As we get older, do you think there are other aspects we, we might wanna consider or think about? Well, as we get older, our, we, our lives, our lifestyles change. Maybe we, maybe we're able to travel more. Maybe we merge our households. We downsize, um, and we also think about all these things that we have that we've been, as I say, schlepping around like my box. What are we going to do with it? So what we've done is we put together a team of resources for people to help them deal with the different aspects. So. I work with you on the legal side of these things and um, I do the home organizing and project management for a lot of people that let's say you wanna to move to senior housing, you wanna live in a place, maybe it is only two rooms instead of your big house or two, three rooms, but you want it to be home. You don't want it to look like some institutional thing that someone did for you, it's yours. So right. we make it look like yours and you feel really like you've got something special and it's yours. Um, we do things, I have someone who specializes in uh, organization of paper uh, documents. And I know that you've uh, interviewed her in the past, Leah, mm -hmm. and she's really, really great. Um, and one of the things that people forget about and we certainly deserve is curating your wardrobe, okay? We all deserve to look good. We're grandparents, but we can look good. And our style is very different during different times. And I do a lot of closets, wardrobes, go through wardrobes. I even have a stylist that I work with um, depending on the needs of the client. And we, it's not necessarily that I say go out and buy new clothes, but we look different in our clothes and we wanna have the things that work for us today. So I do that. Um, 
I also, I mentioned that we have a photo archivist that works with us um, and even people that help put together books and your personal stories, if you like. So we have a lot of different resources to consider and to work with as we get older. And sometimes it's just making things more comfortable because the chair that we used to sit on that was really comfortable to us is no longer comfortable or you know, we just want our kitchen to work better. Um, I have someone who I didn't throw out one thing in her house, but I reorganized her kitchen so that she didn't hurt her back when she worked so she could cook comfortably. And that, that was an amazing thing. And she's much more efficient and the kitchen looks great. And uh, yeah, those are the kinds of things we think about. It's really important. You know, you don't usually think about it all the time, but these are even what you just said about the kitchen. She must be, she, she could have been struggling maybe for years with this kitchen about things that are not in the places where she would like them to be and just not having, you know, that state of mind to deal with it. And it's wonderful that you can come and deal with things for people and then, you know, just make their lives easier or more productive or more spacious whatever it is that yeah. gives them and that really you're right that really gives somebody a peace of mind yeah I, I have to say that a lot of mothers and grandmothers want me to come in and help their daughters organize their house but the important thing is that the daughter has to want me to come in <laughs> and help them organize their house or the son you know but it it does make things work a lot more efficiently and and being intentional about all this, that that's really Im important. It's not just going in and throwing it around. Like I, I mean, I've even worked with daughters hired by mothers and I've said to them, okay, what do you need? What do you need to do to get the kids out in the morning? Where do you, what are the things you need? Where, you know, cause I want her to be able to do it quickly. And what do you want your kids to be able to get to? What do you want them to be able to do for themselves? Okay, and then we reorganize the place according to that. So it, it, it's just based on that's what works for you. Yeah, and sometimes it's just the little stuff that makes such a big difference, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and that, that you get that, I think that peace of mind comes from really getting, knowing that you have things in order for now so that you can be free. You have, whether it's your financial matters or your physical environment, which I'm very focused on the physical environment, um, but all those things are very important. Um, and I know a lot of women that I work with have questions about, uh, I, I say to couples when I work with them, do you both know where the money is? Do you both know how to get into the bank accounts? Do you both have all your documents? You know where the documents are. And they look at me and they say, well, we asked you just to come and uh, clean out three closets. And I said, yeah, I'm here to help you make things so it works. I just want to understand how you work, you know? So they, a lot of times the women say, I don't know where things are. So I have someone that comes, she spends a few hours with the, the couple and helps them get everything in order so that everyone knows where everything is. So yeah, it's important. I'm, I'm going to share something with you to sure. To to give you sort of a sense of how I see it. So there's this um, <clears throat> business guru named uh, Rashid Unguluru, and he said, peace of mind arrives the moment you come to peace with the contents of your mind. And I say that peace of mind arrives the moment you come to peace with the contents of your life. So we look at all aspects and it's for you to choose what's important what, what things you want to look at and where you want to curate and uh, make a difference. It's a beautiful quote. That's such a nice way of wrapping this, this conversation up. And you're right. It's not, it's also about you, but it's also about how you want to leave things for the next generation or even for your spouse. If, if we're talking about couples, um, very important. So Adina, this was really informative. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to talk to you about this. And if anyone wants to discuss with Adina, so her contact information is, first of all, her phone number. 
is 050-524-6937. And her email is adina at adina cooper, C-O-O-P-E-R dot com. And I will also put her information and her website and her Facebook page um, and the comment below this discussion. So you'll all be able to contact her and see how she can help you. Um, I think we're done. Thank you so very, very much. It was thank lovely. you, Mary. And um, thank you very much, guys, for listening and tuning in. We will have another discussion next week. So um, don't forget to watch this page. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you, Mary. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.